Yuri Vitrenko is the CEO of Naftagas, which is uh, Ukraine's state-owned gas company. As Russian bombs rain down on his country, Russia still transporting about a third of its gas that it sends to Europe through Naftagas pipelines. Vitrenko tweeted this week that this was a necessity and that there are tens of millions of people in need of critical utilities. He said, when there's a war, your expenses are up, people can't pay. Basically, it's humanitarian assistance. Well, he joins us now from Ukraine. It's good to have you with us, sir. Let's just address um, what Vladimir Putin has said in the past couple of hours, that Russia will halt gas supplies to buyers from, quote, unfriendly countries, which is basically the whole of Europe, unless they switch to payments in rubles from tomorrow. I interviewed the Prime Minister of Slovenia this time yesterday, a country heavily dependent on Russian gas. Take a listen to what he told me. Nobody in Europe is, uh, is prepared to pay in rubles. This is also against the contracts which were signed. And I think that the message from our ministers was very clear. I saw yesterday the message from the G7 minister. So nobody will pay in rubles, mm. I, I, I believe. Actually, we don't know how, 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 how they look like. Well, I wonder whether you share his confidence. Uh, after all, we do know Europe has been divided on the issue of Russian gas. Do you worry this threat by... Vladimir Putin to turn off the taps could fracture the United Europe, European front on these uh, gas sanctions? I hope it will not. Uh, I suspect mm. that uh, there will be some European countries that would raise the question of switching to rubles, but I think that uh, uh, other European countries and the European Commission will make sure that uh, they stay united, because only in such a way they can really confront and contain uh, Vladis Putin's regime. Mm. It has to be a concern, though, doesn't it? Ukraine has been calling for Europe to halt its imports of Russian gas, and yet its transit to Europe via Ukraine is continuing as normal. Is NAFTA gas prepared to cut off the pipelines going through Ukraine from Russia to Europe? And if not, why not, sir? As soon as Europe stops buying Russian gas, uh, there will be no flow of Russian gas. So we won't even need uh, to uh, turn off the taps. Mm. And uh, at the same time, um, as long as Europe continues uh, to buy Russian gas, uh, of course, it's, it would be worse if uh, this gas goes through such pipelines as Nord Stream 1 or Nord Stream mm. 2 that uh, Putin uh, built. Uh, from this perspective, we say that, and before, we were saying that allowing to build Nord Stream 2 and Nord Stream 1 even, it was a big geopolitical mistake, on, for example, on the German side. Is it safe to say that Ukraine is benefiting from this transaction by collecting transit fees? Uh, but it's a very limited view. Yes, we're collecting transit fees, but mm. as I'm saying... We are advocating for a full embargo on Russian gas and oil. Uh, so now when they're killing, again, the Ukrainians, they're ruining our cities, uh, we understand a real mm. price uh, of Russian uh, gas and Russian oil. And that's why we say that the whole world should stop buying Russian gas and oil. And we are prepared to lose uh, any transit revenues. It's not compared um, with costs of Russian uh, aggression. Has Russia been targeting NAFTA gas transit facilities that are providing what are needed energy uh, requirements to Ukrainian households? Uh, yes, they are targeting uh, the so-called distribution pipelines uh, that, for example, distribute gas to Ukrainian households. They are ruining, basically, tearing off uh, Ukrainian cities like Mariupol, like uh, Kharkiv, like uh, Akhtyrka and many other cities. But when you look at the transit pipelines, you definitely see that they don't want to um, hit them with their missiles uh, and, in general, to cause any damage uh, to these uh, pipelines. So they're rather selective in terms of what they do. So they're okay with creating humanitarian catastrophes uh, 
inside Ukraine, because that puts more pressure on the Ukrainian government, but they don't want to hurt their revenue streams. As you and I have just been talking, I am just getting news in, and I think it's important that you hear this and that the viewers hear this, that um, in response to Vladimir Putin's threat today uh, that gas um, supplies will be turned off if Europeans don't start buying or paying uh, in rubles, France and Germany have just said that they will refuse to pay for their gas contracts in rubles. Um, your response to that? That's exactly what we expect uh, from the West, to stay strong and uh, not to fall uh, into the trap uh, uh, laid out by Putin. Because it's not even about blackmail, it's about humiliating uh, Europe, humiliating the, the whole world with this uh, clearly illegal uh, suggestion to pay uh, in, in rubles. So that's why here France and Germany finally show leadership how to confront uh, uh, Putin's regime aggression. Yeah, I have to ask you again, you know, how concerned are you um, about how long that leadership might last, given that we've heard from German ministers who say that this is going to be a very, very painful period for the German public, that this war is going to have an enormous impact on the German general public? You see, you understand things in comparison. Uh, mm. In Ukraine, uh, the cost that we are paying, it's, again, thousands of uh, civilians dying, uh, kids, uh, pregnant women, again, all these hostilities, mm. uh, just horrendous. So if Germans will have to pay slightly more uh, for their energy, maybe they will have to, again, keep temperature a little bit lower in their houses, maybe they will refuse again to have an extra travel with a big car or something like that. It cannot be compared with the risk that Germany, not even Ukraine, Germany bears if uh, Putin imperialistic ambitions are not stopped now in Ukraine. And probably leaders mm -hmm. of Germany and France, they now s started to realize the risks coming from this uh, imperialistic uh, ambitions of Putin. Mm -hmm. I have to ask you, sir, um, how are you doing? <laughs> again, uh, there is no safe place in Ukraine, and I'm in Ukraine. I have to travel again to Kiev. Uh, Kiev is being bombed uh, uh, like almost every day. Uh, I have to go to uh, our sites uh, where we still produce, for example, gas or deliver uh, heating to, to Ukrainians. Uh, Unfortunately, some of our employees were killed, civilians. They were killed by Russian army. Uh, again, many of our infrastructure assets uh, are ruined. So, of course, and every hour I hear about a new attack, uh, a new, um, again, um, sometimes death of, of my personnel. Again, as you can imagine, it's, it's not uh, uh, an easy period of everybody's life in Ukraine. And then, for example, when I think about our customers in the city of Mariupol that is besieged by Russian army, they cannot exit. Uh, and they're dying over there. So, of course, it, it's horrible. Oh, sir, um, our thoughts are with you. Um, I appreciate your time. I know um, things are really tough for you. Um, thank you for joining us.